What's up guys, Doll Matter here, and today we're going to be doing another reaction to the Conservative Twins, which is for, I'm sure everyone's aware, the Hodge Twins, uh, old fitness YouTubers started doing political content. Now this one is uh, a couple years old, but it's something that kind of came up recently. So this is NFL to play Black National Anthem before National Anthem. Now I remember this came up a couple years ago that it became a huge controversy, it kind of died down, it seemed like they weren't going to do anything. Uh, but then just two or three months ago, I think it was, I think it was at one of the preseason games, or it might've been one of the first games of the season. They, they played the black national anthem at uh, one of the games and it became a huge controversy again. The entire stadium was booing, uh, you know, obviously conservatives, uh, all over YouTube were dunking on it. Uh, so even though this video is a little bit old, people also should check it out. So link to the original video down below. Let's jump into it. National anthem. We in Africa? <laughs> you damn Africans and lost your mind. The Black National Anthem. I don't even think they got a Black National Anthem in Africa. <laughs> I mean, they do in South Africa. Let's kill the boor. You think so? What do you think? Man, Y'all, that to... is simply ridiculous. Like, Black <laughs> National Anthem? Are you crazy? That's like... When you have to come up with a black national anthem, it makes you think it's that open. there's a white national anthem. <laughs> yeah. That it's a Latino national anthem. That there's a... Na the, the thing with like a lot of the people that push this kind of stuff is they think the national anthem is the white national anthem. Um, it's also kind of weird how like black nationalism is like completely socially acceptable within society not only socially acceptable but like mainstreamed by one of the political parties right this ethno-nationalist uh ideology that you know in its more extreme variants advocates for uh genocide white erasure uh in some case uh separatist states right completely socially acceptable and pushed by one of the main parties in the united states Native national anthem. Did y'all know the national anthem? The uh, the Star Spangled Banner. That's for everybody. It's yeah. it's uni It's supposed to be unifying. Yeah. When you come up with the Black national anthem, that's kind of divisive. Yeah. It's just for Black people. <laughs> it's not unifying. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Not Black people. African Americans. Yeah, they don't like to be called Black Americans. Nah, they want to be African Americans. I think they don't even want to be African Americans. <laughs> they want to be Africans. <laughs> <laughs> Hate to break it to you, but you got a simple fix for that. You know you can uh, leave. <laughs> one way, hey, give me one way ticket to Africa. Uh, hold up, man. We sound like some white supremacists here. <laughs> you know, I'm just being real. If you want to be, a, if you want to hold your allegiance to Africa, you want to be African. Pick up your, pick yourself up by your bootstrap. <laughs> You can go back to the motherland. Hey, look here. Let's get back to the Black National Anthem. Now, in the NFL, for the first week of games, yeah. they're going to sing this before the National Anthem. Now, if this is such a great idea, yeah. why don't you do it the whole season? Yeah. All 16 games. You can even do it for the Super Bowl. Black Lives Matter, right? I'm actually pretty sure that they said they're going to do it at the Super Bowl, and then that became a huge controversy, too. I might be wrong there, but... I mean, if Black Lives Matter... Why are you only doing it for one week? Sounds like black lives don't matter to me. You're just doing it for one week. You know why? They know it's a horrible idea. They'll forget the first week of the season. We got 15 more games of the Super Bowl left. We can recover. Man, this is a horrible idea. And everybody, if you go look up the history of this black national anthem, it yeah. was never meant to be called the black national anthem. Yeah. This song was actually written for to celebrate Abraham Abraham Lincoln's birthday. Yeah. White dude. <laughs> <laughs> he was president. He freed the slaves, you know. He was Republican. Yeah. You know that statue y'all, that statue y'all defaced and y'all tried to rip down? Yeah, that dude. <laughs> they really try ripping down the Abe statue. Now, the NAACP back in 1990. There was a, just recently, like the past couple of weeks, there's been talks of, I can't remember the guy's name. Uh, he's from Toronto, though, and he was an abolitionist uh, who was involved uh, d during the time that we were still part of the British Empire. I don't even think Canada had confederation yet. That's how long ago we're talking, like before 1867. 
And, uh, well, I mean, obviously it would have been before 1867 because the British have uh, ended slavery fucking the early 1800s. But anyway, um, this guy, he knew this bill wasn't going to – he was an abolitionist, but he knew the bill wouldn't get passed as it was written. So he changed it from the immediate emancipation to the gradual emancipation. That way it would get voted through. And then now modern day people are mad at him because he made that change. But ironically, the only reason it even got passed was because he made that change to the bill. And people are still fucking mad at him. They're like, magically, he should have just forced everyone to vote for it. As if that, you know, as if he had the power to do that. 19? Yeah. They actually coined the phrase, this is the Black National Anthem. Now, yeah. back in 1919, believe it or not, yeah. the NAACP was a legitimate organization <laughs> that was fighting systemic racism in this yeah. country. But now, they're just around the day to uh, keep racism alive. You know why, don't you? Because without racism, they ain't got no job. <laughs> That's why they keep it around. They Man, that reminds me of the ADL. The ADL... <clears throat> or No, it's not the ADL. It's the... Uh, Oh, fuck. What, the one group. Uh, it's not the ADL. It's the... Um, oh, it starts with an A. I can't remember the acronym. They were originally founded as like a, f uh, a group to fight for free speech. And now all they do is constantly try to censor people. They unemployed. I think it's a really disservice to this song because anybody, yeah. I challenge you to Google this song, the lyrics to this song. It is a beautiful song. It's a Christian song. Yeah. But to call it the Black National Anthem, that is such a disgrace. Yeah. If I'm at a basketball game or a football game and you call it the Black National Anthem, I got to take a knee. <laughs> <laughs> I got to take a knee because you call it the Black National Anthem. That's divisive. Many would argue that that's Jim Crow all over again. Yeah. Many would argue that that's segregation. Yeah. And I'm not with that. I Man, that's one thing I find fascinating about like, current Democrat policies is how little they've changed. They've just been rebranded, right? So if you take something like abortion, right? Margaret Sanger, one of the you know founding uh, members of the abortion movement within the United States, originally proposed it as a way to get rid of the undesirables or the undesirable races, uh, right? It was to get rid of poor whites that they considered, you know, too dumb to be passing on their genes and African-Americans and basically ethnic minorities. Nowadays, the, the, you know, they market it as like a women's empowerment, free choice type movement, but still most of like the Planned Parenthoods and stuff like that are almost exclusively in poor neighborhoods and in African-American neighborhoods, right? So it still fits the exact same goal, even though it's been rebranded. And then one thing you've seen recently, it's kind of died down a bit over the past year or two, but you really saw this from like when Trump came into power until shortly after Biden came into power, was you would have a lot of universities in other areas pushing black only spaces and black safe spaces and stuff like that. They were basically reinstitution, re, uh, reinstituting segregation but changing the marketing so that it was like a pro-black thing right that's one thing i find like absolutely fascinating is how so many of the democrat policies are literally the exact same as they were back during jim crow when the kkk was a paramilitary group of the fuck it, or a paramilitary wing or you know whatever you want to call it of the democratic party they have the exact same policies just completely remarketed it, it's honestly kind of fascinating I gotta take a knee. I'm all about unifying. If y'all want to do something separate, um, but you could have did like what Ray Charles did, America the Beautiful. Yeah. Everybody said they should make that the national anthem. And but yeah. even then I wouldn't call his version of America the Beautiful the <laughs> black national anthem. America is supposed to be a unifying I don't think America needs a new national anthem. They have one of the best national anthems. Like it's a fucking it it goes thing. Yeah. You know what you could have named this song? Keeping America Great Again. <laughs> that would have brought everybody together. Or <laughs> no. <one>. Make <laughs> America Great Again theme song. <laughs> Everyone, oh, that. that song is beautiful. Yeah. And you'd call it the Black National Anthem. That's, that's just not right, man. That's that's not that, unifying. A national anthem is supposed to be meant for everybody. Now you got to come up with the Native American yeah. National anthem. Now you got to come out with the Asian. Hey, don't forget the gay. Uh, the natives might already have theirs. Just because, like, with the Native Americans, it depends on the tribe and the specific treaty. But a lot of them are, you know, nations within a nation, right? They have, like, semi-autonomous zones. 
Um, sometimes like on state borders where they don't have to follow state laws, they have their own laws. Um, you know, they obviously have to follow federal regulations, but a lot of them, it, it, again, it depends. Like it varies wildly from tribe to tribe, depending on the trees and stuff. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised. Like a lot of them probably do have their own, I don't know what you would call it, like a national anthem, but it'd be more like kind of similar to a state anthem, I guess. Uh, but I, I, I would not be surprised at all if they had their own anthems. Hey's man. Oh, you got their own flags for the shit. um. What you call them? Transgender. <laughs> transgender community. Because you gotta come up one for the bisexual community. Yeah. See what I'm saying? It's divisive. You should yeah. have one song that's unifying. The Star Spangled Banner, the national anthem. Yeah. It stands for all of us. Yeah. Did y'all know that? You call it the Black National Anthem. That is just so disrespectful to the man who wrote that song. It's disrespectful to our country. Yeah. And it's really disrespecting black folks because it's making them feel like they're not part of America. That's the intended purpose. That's why they call it the Black National Anthem. Did you, do y'all realize that? Hey, divide, black people, I'm talking to y'all. They playing y'all, man. They manipulating y'all, man. They using your pain and suffering. To divide us. Yeah. There's a reason leftist politics are pushed on TikTok, right? You have a Chinese social media platform that is it, not entirely banned. They, they have, so China has their own version, but they have stuff that is banned on Western TikTok is promoted on the Chinese version. And stuff that is banned on the Chinese version is promoted on Western TikTok. And a lot of that is stuff like leftist politics. Um, you know, these kind of like these racial politics, these gender politics, all of the stuff that's meant to divide, right? China is quite literally using like divide and conquer tactics on America. And, you know, I can't even blame them because, you know, it, it makes sense 100% for a, you know, a foreign adversarial nation to be trying to do that. It makes sense, right? Obviously, you're going to try and, you know, destroy and destabilize the West, especially the United States being the global hegemon. What is frustrating is not that they're doing that, you know. That's, that's just the name of the game. What's frustrating is you have a, you know, n nearly half the population in Western countries, which follows those exact same ideologies, right? These ideologies that were, you know, are specifically designed and or promoted in order to destabilize and factionalize the West. That way it's much more easier to much more easy to divide and conquer are being promoted by essentially half the country, right? Or, or half the West, right? Half, it, it, you know, by half the population in our countries. That's what they're doing. Yeah, that's why I can't get behind Black Lives Matter because as a concept, yeah. who can't stand behind, you know, Black Lives Matter? But mm -hmm. that organization yeah. is not intended to help black people. Yeah. It's intended to enslave black people's minds to make them think yeah. that that life is less valuable than a white person. Yeah. They point I think half the problem there is so many people can't get past political sloganing. Political sloganing is honestly so effective for, you know, I, I, I would honestly, I would love to see a study done on like, get a bunch of political slogans, show them to people with varying ranges of IQs and see, you know, at what IQ are people able to see past a slogan? Because I would not be surprised if people with like a sub, you know, sub 100 for sure, but even like a sub 110, sub 115 IQ, if, if they are unable to get past political sloganing. Because it seems like there's a lot of people who are not like, you know, they're, they're, they're reasonably smart. They're fairly smart, but not like genius level or anything. But they hear a political slogan and they 100% jump on board. Now, I imagine a big factor there is also... Uh, you know, bias when it, you know, kind of like people's preconceived notions. I'm having a brain fart on the exact term. It's confirmation bias, right? Where, you know, they already agree with the ideology and therefore they're more willing to fall into the slogan. I, I bet you that plays a huge factor on it too. But you'll see people parrot all different kinds of political slogans on like TikTok and X and YouTube and all these different platforms. And they'll parrot the slogan. And then if you try to engage with them on, you know, the, the merits of their ideology or like what they're talking about, they'll most, they'll just repeat the slogan at you or ask if you have a problem with the slogan, right? They basically straw man their own argument as a slogan. And it really is like, it, it, it's interesting because it, it's interesting because on one level, it's so fucking stupid, but on another level, it's so effective.
right? It, it seems to work with a large percentage of the population. Um, and you'll, you'll see this with like so many things, right? But anyway. One out BS statistics that's not even relevant yeah. to the uh, the people that losing their lives to, let's say, what do you call it? Um, to the hands of a white police officer. Yeah. They're not going to tell you most people, black men dying at the hands of a police officer, is because they are violent. They're just going to say it's because of their skin color. It has nothing to do with them beating the shit out of the cop. It has yeah. nothing to do with them trying to grab that gun. Yeah. No, he killed him because he was black. It's a lie. Yeah, the common denominator in all these, yeah. these, um, these police brutality that's been going on in this country, yeah. it, every common denominator is this. They're aggressive. Yeah. They fight the cops. They punch the cops. They resist arrest. They resist arrest. Every single instant. I'm telling you like this. To every black American that has lost his life at the hands... You, you know what's kind of ironic? Is the only instance I can think of in the past couple of years where I've seen a police shooting that was completely unjustified was the one white dude in the hotel where he's, you know, getting on his knees and then the officer tells him to get down and then he, like, tries... He tells him to get up and to leave his hands there. It's like... Dude, like, you have to be insanely physically fit to do that, where you just, like, lift yourself off just using your abs. Like, e even a lot of professional athletes can't do that. Like, those videos, that was, like, a challenge for professional athletes that were posting on, like, Twitter and TikTok and shit, like, not that long ago. And uh, you expect just this random civilian to do it. And that is, so the one unjustified killing I can think of, and I'm sure there's more, but it's the one that I can remember over the past five or ten years, was not even a black dude, it was a fucking white dude. Hands of a... Uh, of a white cop, a black cop, or anything. If you just exercise just a little personal responsibility, don't drink and drive, don't resist, don't fight the cops, do what's right, obey the law. 99.99% of all these fatal shootings by cops wouldn't even happen. Black National Anthem. What a disgrace to this country. Oh, I'm telling you. I'm taking a knee, not because I don't think it's a beautiful song, it's because the title of that song is so disgraceful to those lyrics. I'm taking a knee. And you know what? I'm going to hold up a sign that says, all lives matter while I'm doing it. You're taking it too far, you're going to... I don't care. <laughs> it's time for us to take a stand, America. <laughs> yeah. Good official Hoss Twins died. Yeah, I mean, I, I know just recently that they... Uh, let me see if I can find the Black National Anthem. Uh, NFL. I know this just happened just recently. Yeah, so September 11th, 2023. Um, oh, wait, no, this is a... This is a different one than the one that we were talking about before. Uh, I guess they decided to change the Black National Anthem. But, I'm, yeah, so this was back in September, at the start of September. This was, like, a huge controversy. I didn't realize that they played... Uh, The Black National Anthem at the fucking Super Bowl last year. I didn't watch the Super Bowl, but... Yeah. I didn't even realize they played it there last year. I'm surprised that wasn't a bigger controversy. Maybe it was, and I was just not uh, paying enough attention to notice. But anyway, let me know what you guys think below. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.